Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus, and today we've got a pair of Johnson Murphys. We're going to be swapping out this uh, rubber heel with a leather one and adding one of these guys here, what's known as a V cleat. So come join us, check it out, see how it's done, and uh, enjoy the show. So I'm Alan Tershkov. Join us today and enter our world of a cobbler to see the craftsmanship it takes to rebuild and restore footwear and other leather goods as well as recommendations from our industry. All right, so as I mentioned, we've got a pair of Johnson Murphys here. You now there are some people who like the Johnson Murphy and then the avid shoe enthusiasts, not so much. Um, you know, they're in their right to not be too big of a fan of them just because of the way they're constructed in general um, there's there's only a few models out there that are really really well designed in other words um, I mean these are these are well designed the only problem is that uh, when you look down in here it looks like it's stitched right in here but it really isn't it's actually just a glued on sole so that's kind of one of the dilemmas that a lot of people come across with uh, with Johnson and Murphy um, you know, still a much better build than some of the shoes out there, but not at the top. Johnson & Murphy, however, does have a better design when it comes to your support features, just from the construction of it. We used to sell Johnson & Murphy at our old location when we had retail, and uh, we, we tend to usually carry more of like a orthopedic, supportive, comfort line, and uh, Johnson Murphy fell into that category very well because out of the box, they're definitely going to have more support features and more comfort to them than uh, you know most other shoes out there. So we ended up uh, carrying them. They were very good shoes. They still are. They just aren't one of the upper scales. But I wanted to just kind of do this video for everyone just to show you what it's like for us to do a v-cleat now a v-cleat tends to go on the outside edge like that of the heel it's better if i show you on the lighter shoe but it goes on the outside edge like that right there and so this gentleman he wants to be able to use these shoes for dancing so he needs the leather to be able to slide around but uh, he needs a little bit of durability on this outside edge right there that's usually where your first point of impact is so it wears out quickly and especially if you have a leather heel leather heel comes in a little bit more of a premium cost and it wears down quicker than rubber so what's placed in there is that little metal cleat right there to help a uh, wear wear a little more efficiently um, this particular metal here that they use for these v cleats is not a particular metal that they designed where it's going to get sharp or scratch up floors very easily the way it wears is it's going to kind of chip away in little small follicles that will just kind of disappear pretty much so it's not going to cause any form of harm or anything um, the there are a few downsides to it one is uh, these any shoes with these kinds of heels on them traditionally uh, floor shimes the old imperials they used to do that actually on their shoes they were known as suicide heels because again this is metal so it has no grip or anything so when you're walking on a smooth surface it can get very slippery the other thing is these heels are actually discontinued well the v cleats themselves they're discontinued there's nobody manufacturing them anymore so we have a small amount of them left over at the moment i just have this one box left now and it's kind of a shame i wish i was able to grab more of them but uh, because of that high demand unfortunately all of us cobblers did have to raise up the prices on them quite a bit uh, more than they used to be just because we have a limited supply left of them manufacturing them i've i've had a lot of people say well why can't you just go to a manufacturer or you know a company that manufactures things out of metal well because there's a secret ingredient to these actually there's a secret mixture of how they make these and the company that shut down that used to make them it didn't seem like they passed that secret on to anyone else so just making it out of a steel a, bra a brass or whatever it may be it's not going to be the same it's it's going to scratch up floors badly it's going to be 
one of those where it wears out in such a way where you'll get a sharp corner and so if you have a habit of kicking up your leg to scratch your calf or something on the back end you're you're gonna scratch yourself very well i mean very very well at that point where these were a certain blend of metals and um, other types of uh, ingredients i guess we can call it that uh, it didn't do that it never got sharp it never ended up uh, wearing out to such a way where it will scratch up floors or anything like that so it ended up being perfect but no longer available you know there aren't too many shoes or boots out there that even have them anyways so I'm gonna go ahead and grab the leather sheet that we're gonna be using for this we're going to be using JR of course we're not gonna use anything but JR when it comes to the heels just because JR is a much denser leather, it's gonna hold up longer, it's not gonna absorb moisture as easily. Heels are usually the section of the shoe that tends to wear out the quickest and the fastest, so we definitely have to use something that's really strong, very durable, and will last for as long as possible. So let me go ahead and grab that sheet, get it marked up. The sheet is very large, so it's a little hard for me to get it to fit up here on my currently small counter or workbench. And um, hopefully in our new location, when we move over next door, I'll have, I'll have more ample space. Maybe I'll be able to stretch out that whole sheet of uh, JR leather and let you check it out. Some of you may have seen the picture of it already, but I'll see if maybe I can fit a corner at least up here for you. So let me go grab it. All right, I guess I couldn't even get this thing up to the corner here. I'll show you what the sheet looks like at least a little bit. This is the sheet right here. So it's a little large, slightly rolled up and everything, so it's kind of a pain to, to try to get it on camera. So I ended up uh, looking like an idiot or, you know, trying to get this little piece cut off at least however I could. I had half the, half the um, leather sheet resting on top of my head while I'm trying to angle it all under the five-in-one cutter I have over here. And it, it just... If somebody else was here today at the shop with me, I would tell them, um, you gotta hold the camera or at the very least take a picture of me doing this because it's just, it's just too funny. <laughs> but anyways, I'll go ahead and uh, mark this up. Where my, oh, put my pen on my pocket. Okay, mark up where it goes. I'm gonna try to get as close as I can just because I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it the traditional way with the uh with the heel so it's just gonna be a little bit bigger right now now this one went onto the right foot so i gotta be sure to write on there right and the reason why i can tell is because there's this little uh notch that is sanded out on the inside of the heel it's kind of a traditional thing it used to be done for uh, gentlemen because they would put on their pants when they already had their shoes on and so that corner wouldn't get caught the other thing was uh, cuffs were a big thing and when you're walking a lot of times that corner can get caught up in those cuffs so uh, having that little notch there was um, was very important and it's still uh, still around the cuffs are still around they're popular too so we're going we're gonna to put the little notch in as well. We tend to do that anyways, whether it's leather or rubber. Uh, man, I don't want to waste that much leather or anything. We're still going to use these little, little sections that are going to be left behind anyways for other tasks. Repurpose it for what are called build-ups. Sometimes on a heel we need to do that. And what a build-up is, when you, when you wear your heels down too far, and you wear it into this heel base past the rubber and wear it into the heel base you've got two options we can either remove this entire heel base trash it and put a new leather one on uh, this is the heel base heel block some of you may know this is off of a western boot that we're resoling and um, that's your option that definitely comes in at a higher cost but your other alternative is if you wear it down and usually it's this outer edge right here that gets worn down a little bit, sometimes a lot too. We take pieces of leather, we've got a whole box and bin of different uh, pieces here, and uh, we sand it out, make sure we clean out any gunk or anything like that, level it a little bit more, and then we start building up 
the heel block with pieces of leather. Whether you have fiberboard, uh, plastic heel bases, or leather, majority of the time we tend to use leather. If they're plastic heel bases, actually, we don't use leather on it. We tend to use a rubber. Um, it just uh, binds a lot better than the leather would. So that's, uh, that's why we keep some of these pieces lying around. And you see like this whole pile I have over here, these little scraps. We don't tend to waste very, very often uh, when it comes to our industry. We, we try to use as much as we can. Old soles, unfortunately, there's not much use to them. Say if we were resoling these here, even at this stage, I take off this sole and there's not much I can do with it just because you can tell right there there's some water marking, there's some salt staining there. And so we, um, we're definitely not going to reuse that sole because it's already been um, it's already been altered by the water and the minerals that have been absorbed into the leather. So it's, it's kind of a downside. That's one thing we, we can't reuse that. Same thing with rubber soles too. Uh, say we take off a day night or a Vibram sole. We can't put it in the recycling bin, unfortunately, because there's adhesives on there and the recycling plants can't reuse it. Um, the adhesive is actually extremely harmful for not only the um, the recycling plant but also for the environment if it's put into those vats where they melt uh, whatever they're called the wherever they melt down those rubbers it's extremely harmful when it gets uh, melted so fast at such extreme temperatures it, it you know when we heat it up with the heat gun and everything that's one thing but when you just just force so much heat in a very quick period of time you're gonna have a lot of smoke left behind afterwards with that so not a good thing for environment, not, good, not a good thing for the people working in those areas, and not a good thing for the machinery either. So sadly there is to an extent some of those areas of our industry where we just can't recycle. But it is still a lot better than taking the whole shoe, throwing it out, it ends up in landfill, and it ends up who knows where. You know, getting your shoes resold and rehealed definitely cuts down on all of that. I mean, there is still an extent of, uh, of trash afterwards, but not nearly as bad as throwing away the shoes or boots every single time they get worn out. So, repair them, always. Right, so I'm gonna come over to my five-in-one here. And five-in-one is just gonna cut it all off, so I'm gonna go ahead and go around that. I might, over, I might as well just transition over with the camera for you guys just to see what it's like. This is going to be a shorter video. All my other videos are fairly long, so hey. Alright, so this is what's called our 5-in-1. Um, it's designed to do multiple things. It's a table version machine that's hand-operated like this here. Uh, it's got a welt press up here for anyone that may have seen some of my other videos. And I say I'm going to take it over to the welt press. It's got a skiver over here. so. It, it bevels the edges that's why we got all these little slivers lying around just because uh, when we do a half sole or we need to do other things it ends up cutting it at an angle so one side is thinner and one side's thicker and then we've got our cutter here it's called a five in one because it's supposed to do apparently five different things but um, they categorize two of the areas as four basically so kind of annoying but yeah, whatever we call it a five in one and there are some who have well there are some machines very similar to this that are just like a one in one or a, um, three in one uh, two in one I, th I think there was a two in one yeah I, I think it only did two different things well had two parts on it basically Remember how I said that the JR leather is very dense and durable? Now this thing is cutting through it with ease. Imagine what it can do with your finger. Definitely, definitely something you have to be careful with. Luckily it's not automated machinery or anything, so you can regulate the speed a little bit. So now that piece is going to go into my build-up area. I'm just going to 
cut off this little slit ropes. Usually I have a trash can under here. I didn't want to let you guys see my overflowing trash can at the moment. But make sure that's all in out there. All right, so we're done with that. We're going to go ahead and move on and uh, get things going with the V cleat to mark down. All right, so I adjusted the angle a little bit so that we're able to you know, get everything lined up nicely. Well, more visible, I'm sorry. But at this point, I have everything kind of freely sitting on here. I haven't uh, glued on the sole yet, but I'm trying to mark up where this V cleat is going to sit. Okay, there we go. Because it's just like that there. Roughed up the heel base a little bit there already. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take my razor like this and just uh, cut away at it. Sorry, I don't know if my hat is in the way. I should probably take that off for you. But uh... okay. Now I could glue these on first, sand them out, and then cut this out. But I've noticed it makes it a little bit easier just to cut it out like this and then just get it to line up nicely. Um, you know, it's, at least for me, a lot of other cobblers, uh, they glue on the, the heel first, sand it all out, and that's it. And then they're and then they're able to finally cut this little notch out. I prefer to get it kind of prepped beforehand. Okay, there we go. I got some old scrap leather under here. These are old leather pieces that uh, we will never use for soles or anything else, other than just to be able to cut on. But there we go. I'm just going to sit there just like that there. And... Oops. Beautiful. And then, then once it's sitting on the heel, it'll line up nicely and then we'll just kind of clean off the edges and sand out the bottom and put a little bit of a finish on the bottom to kind of re, uh, redo it all just because these may be slightly thicker sometimes than leather. Leather, unfortunately, even though it's measured out um, thickness-wise or the gauge of it, this one here, I'll grab my little tool. Uh, where the iron? So uh, this one's pushing about four and a half millimeters, roughly, and it uh, it's fairly close to consistency but it's sometimes off maybe by like 0.1 millimeters or something like that uh, where the metal heel plates or heel cleats they uh, they tend to be consistent thickness wise so sometimes we need to kind of level it out to make sure everything's about the same so now at this point I'm gonna go ahead and line up this heel with this one here so the positioning is about the same. There we tell on this side usually okay. just because the opposite side usually has a finish so it makes it a little bit easier for the marking but on the opposite side it makes it just a tad bit harder to see the marking I can see it you guys probably wouldn't be able to see it on the camera I'm a little 
little shaky this uh, well this evening right now just because I had a really long and rough day ended up working very late last night here at the shop and I need a vacation <laughs> And what cobbler doesn't need a vacation? Yeah. There's some cobblers out there that get to take vacations. But not long ago, we had a fellow cobbler swing by our shop by the name of Marcel. He's out from Amsterdam, visiting us here in Denver. And not per, not us per se, but uh, he was out here in Denver visiting family and thought he'd stop by and say hello to us. Kind of nice. Need a fellow cobbler from overseas. But it was uh, kind of nice to see that in, in my industry, some cobblers get a fine time for vacations and everything. I don't, at least not yet. So I'll get there. set and of course uh, the heels they don't these V cleats they never go in the middle they go on the side the outside edge that's first point of impact so I'll go ahead and uh, start gluing everything up I'll let it cure for a little while and then uh, get ready to put in the V cleat and start sanding everything out so we'll go ahead and continue on you guys don't need to watch me glue stuff up so We'll see you in a little bit. All right, so we're back here again. Uh, last night I ended up having to get these glued on as quickly as I can. Uh, nothing too fancy about gluing it on and everything. But um, got the V cleat right here. I gotta try to finish these out fairly quick. The gentleman's gonna be by a little later today to grab them. But that gave enough time for everything to cure so that now today I could end up sanding it out uh, comfortably without having to be concerned about any kind of edges potentially coming up. But um, I ended up uh, wanted to test out to see how the fit is right here for that v-cleat and I took the hammer and kind of tapped it lightly and it got wedged in there pretty good so I can't take it back out for you to be able to check it out but since I have it in there might as well run the nail in now these v-cleats usually have just one hole for a nail like this don't know if you guys can see it but it's what's called a gripper nail and it's got these little rings around the edges of the nails so that once it goes in, it grips it nicely. But before I actually run that in, I'll grab my trusty little awl right here and just make sure I get everything straight because the problem is that if I go straight for the nail, the nail will actually want to turn whatever direction it feels like, basically. But if I pre-punch a hole in here, even a little one, and get it in there nice and straight. Okay, move on to the next size. Oh, that vibration must have loosened it up. It popped out. <laughs> but uh, let's see. Make sure. See how that that hole is going in here. back in there and now I can go ahead and grab the nail and uh, where's that hole there it is A little difficult to get these to go in just because this is a fiberboard heel base so I'm gonna have to make that hole a little bit bigger and 
That was the all I was gonna use to punch the hole to make it bigger. I gotta find it now. I can't see it under the table very well. All right, got it. Rolled way underneath that table. Can't see that far without a light, so. Sorry, got interrupted with a phone call, but got uh, got the nail down in there pretty good, but uh, we still gotta get it down a little bit deeper. This is how it's sitting in there currently. Now, once we get the punch tool like that, it's got a nice flat end, so not like the awls where they're pointed. Gonna be able to punch that nail down in there. Sitting in there good. Of course, it's sticking up just a tad bit, so that's why we're gonna end up having to go through and kind of sand the bottom out a little bit and get it all taken care of. Do the same thing with this other one. Oh, I end up with the nail in there. Don't remember putting the nail in there. But I'll go ahead and get this one. Uh, get this one together. And then uh, get ready to start sanding it out and everything. And I'll let you guys check that out. You'll see some sparks flying, flying possibly. It's not much. It's especially because of the type of metal this is. There really is very little sparks that ever fly. So go ahead and get it taken care of, and I'll see everyone back here in a little bit when it's time to sand it up and get it going. I'll probably um, uh, go straight to the. Oh, actually, before I do that. I'm gonna go straight to the 100 grit sandpaper belt just because it's going to the 24 grit which is our heavier grit sandpaper it's a little it's a little rough so unfortunately it leaves too much uh, gouges in the in the leather as well as in the metal itself and it's a little bit harder to get those cleaned out but to get it down closer so I don't have to go to the 24 grit I'm gonna use our uh, hook blade like this and just Cut out some of the extra here. Oh, man, I'm gonna need to change out this blade. It's starting to get a little, a little worn out. And just takes out just a little bit. Not, not everything. At least not with a dense leather like the JR leather, and of course. This blade's getting a little uh, on the duller side, so yeah, I'll probably go ahead and change out the blade. But you get the idea. We'll just end up slicing like that, and I just can't get it to go through. It's too dull already, and this stuff is way too hard. That combination makes it a little hard to cut, and I don't want to end up stabbing myself. Uh, earlier this week, I accidentally stabbed myself. can't even remember which finger it was. I think it was my index finger here. I just went straight in there. Looked fine at first glance, and then all of a sudden I noticed I had a had a little bit of a red goo coming out. So had to get it taken care of before I got it anywhere. All right, so I'll get that taken care of, and we'll see you back in just a few when it's time to sand everything. All right, so we're here at our sanding belt. I uh, thought I'd give you guys a different angle. We'll go ahead and sand everything out here. On the other side here, you won't really see it, but I got a what's called a brister cone. It's gonna clean out this uh, inside area right there, get it all evened out. And then up top, I have what's called a numb cake. I'll try to see if I can change up the angle for you to see it, at least uh, from this view angle, uh, once I'm getting ready to do that. So I'll go ahead and run both of the shoes through the two sanders here, and then let you check out the numb cake. Hopefully this angle ends up working for it. So let's go ahead.
All right, so we've got the edging on, got it waxed up and everything. So now, like I said, it's gonna get on the top here. And since that uh, heel is sitting a little bit uh, above, just by a little bit, it's time to make sure everything's leveled out. I could technically leave leave the V cleat as e as is. I can't talk today. I've been really worn out these last few days, but. Um, you know, leaving it as is, unfortunately, there's sharp edges still a little bit, you know, at the very corners at the moment. And so I want to make sure that's all evened out. So we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so I took the shoes off uh, camera for a minute just because the gentleman who owns these uh, ended up coming in. He's right here behind the camera. And uh, so we're gonna go ahead and finish it out. He said to go ahead and uh, leave it roughed out without putting any kind of bottom finish, but we'll still run a couple of nails in there so that it holds everything nicely. The gentleman here behind the camera is actually my insurance agent, Stephen Gilbert, right? Yes, so that's it. Check out his website. If so, if you need insurance, he will take good care of you. StephenGilbertInsurance.com. There you go. <laughs> he got me set up so that in case one of these uh, tools end up flying and hitting me in the head or, you know, if something happens, I'll be covered. And uh, if uh, something falls and really does some damage, Got the family covered at least. <laughs> Grab our brass tack nails and just tack everything down. Makes it a little bit nicer looking. Helps with, reinforce with the wear as well. So I'll finish out the rest of these nails off camera for you so I can get this gentleman going quicker here and then I'll finish out the video with everybody in, in just a few minutes and yeah, take a few pictures for you for the after. So we'll see everyone back in just a few then. All right, so Steven let me uh, finish out the video real quick uh, on this, but we'll let him get on the way. So uh, I've got the nails in here. We've got the nice bra brass tack nails that was spaced out one inch apart. Kind of uh, helps the uh, leather bind a little bit better to the uh, composite material or fiberboard material. I don't know why I keep saying composite today but um, that way it'll be a little more secure for a longer period of time and the brass will help reinforce it as well. As far as my measuring tool, which I just had it, it's just a little compass like this. I measure it out, mark where I need it, and uh, I take the punch all, which I also lost, punch all and pre-punch it. Looks like I already bent it, so I'm gonna have to get it replaced now. Can't fix a bent at all. But uh, anyways, that's what it looks like there. And again, if, uh, if anybody ever wants us to do this, the dilemma is that these uh, V cleats are discontinued. Nobody's manufacturing them, so unfortunately there may be limitations if you go to another cobbler shop or down the road you decide to, for us to do it. We're limited on the supply quantity that we have in stock and we can't get any more any, anywhere around the world. I had to ship some out to a gentleman in Australia some time ago and uh, even he couldn't get them. So, you know. But if you want your V-cleats taken care of, get them done now at your local cobbler shop if they have them in stock. Otherwise, hope you enjoyed the video to see how we put on a JR 
leather heel with uh, the V cleat for you. And um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'm going to go ahead and buff these up, add a little bit of wax, and take some pictures. And we'll see you next time. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell icon if you want to be notified when we have new videos out. So we'll see everyone later.